this week has been a really big week. Not only have we had a very exciting delivery at the pub, but we have a monumental update on the opening date for the Thirsty Whippet pub. And I cannot wait to share the update with you later in the video. We have also been moving doors because that's what we do. Uh, the Parisian suite door moved this week and I'm gonna show you the progress when where we've got to with that project. We're also answering more of your questions from our 200th episode where you asked us questions and we've got more answers and I can't wait to share them with you. And don't forget, if you're enjoying our videos, make sure you hit subscribe on our YouTube channel the Lady Smith Manor Diaries to ensure you see all our videos when we first put them out. But first, let me show you what we've been up to this week. So look what just arrived. Nice, very nice. Big box. Big box, big faucet. And Stephen asked me what was in it when he first got this. <laughs> yeah, can I have my hand over yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's open it up and see what's... So this is the faucet that's going in the pub kitchen. Commercial kitchen. Yep. Oh, they even spot my name wrong. Mario. Mario. Who's Mario? Okay. Let's get our open. Oh. So we've ordered our taps and our sink and our counters. We thought they'd all come together, but this actually arrived this morning, so we were not expecting this. So this is kind of a big moment, but it's the first piece to our kitchen, which will then allow us to get sign off from the health inspector. That's a big faucet. That is definitely hot and cold. Hot and cold, cold. nice. Hot. Yeah. But then look at this thing. Huge. Now that's oh, this is that is one heck of a. And that's only the part of it. Tap. This Where's goes, the other this, part? This goes down here. Oh, this is this the, the bottom. To it. Okay. So this is way down here like this. Oh gosh. So that goes down there like that. Right. Oh my then, goodness. Yeah. Like. And, and this is a this is like a faucet, so you can turn the water on here. Right. Or you can just do this. It's probably always like a handle. <laughs> it's like. That's big. That is big. Okay, let's just take that bit off. And then, oh, and then that's another tap. So, wow, this yep. is quite the. That's the tap that goes down there. So that's like the pot filler tap, right? Uh, oh, that's the sprayer. Yeah. And then this goes like that. Yeah, there you go. Like that. Yeah. Somewhere like that. Hopefully you'll be able to figure out how to put it together when we get the sink. Yeah, I hope so. Because otherwise it's going to be... There you go. It goes like that. <laughs> We're going to have water everywhere. Well... It goes like that. This is quite... So that goes on top of that. Yep. And then this will go on there. And there. Right. And then this goes on the sink. And then we'll be we'll be ready to wash our glasses, and the health inspector will be happy, and sign a little piece of paper, and then we'll be able to get the pub open. And a few days later, look what else arrived. Our sink and countertops. All we had to do now was put all the pieces together. This is a hard job for you, hey? Very complicated. <laughs> Two little Allen key bolts, screws, whatever you call them. Yeah, they're knife turning the wrong way. Maybe the legs will fall off. Let's hope not. The exciting moment when we get to see our first countertop. Feels like we've been waiting for these forever. I guess it's not that long to wait, hey? So the question is, can you get this off in one piece? No. Come on. You gotta be more optimistic than that. I have faith in you. Okay. 
Look how lovely that looks. Okay, you did half in one piece. So the sink and the countertops are now all in. So let's go see how it all looks. So it's starting to look like a real kitchen. The sink is in on this side. We've now got our really long countertop against the back wall there. And then a second countertop here. And you can see that Stephen is just starting on working on getting all the plumbing in for our really big uh, faucet tap that's going to go in um, so he's going to get that plumbed in and then uh, we'll be adding shelves uh, around the top there but it's just I just love it and I can't believe how much space it fills in here I remember if you remember back it would this seem like such a small little room but now we've got the floor the tiles the uh, countertops in it just feels like there's lots of space which is fantastic one of the requirements of the fire marshal before we can open the pub is to have the door to the prison suite moved so it doesn't open out onto the hallway at the top of these stairs. And so this week, that's exactly what we've been doing. So this is where the Parisian suite door currently is, but that's all got to change. So what's the plan with this door? Which isn't a door right now, but needs to be a door. <laughs> I don't have anything nice to say. <laughs> I know you really don't want to make this door, do you? No, it's, it's, you know, and it's just a lack of a better word, it's stupid. <laughs> we have a perfectly good door on the other side, but the fire Rolls. marshal decided that it's not safe to have a door on a stairwell, even though we have a $30,000 fire system and a fire escape on this side of the house. Right. So we have to put the door behind a fire door, which is behind you. Right. So, so we're now knocking a hole in the wall to make another door for our Prozian suite. Correct. Which is not making you happy at all. No. No. So as we have to do it, we're just sucking it up and doing it, right? That is correct. So we're the first job. Because we have to do this so we can open the pub. Right. It, it's a hundred feet away. But we have to do it. Right. Like but we're just going to get on with it because that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Right. So, what's the plan? You're knocking off all the plaster to find the where the beams are and then we're going to decide where the hot Hopefully door Hopefully there's hidden treasure. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. I wonder what's behind this. Yeah. We might be able to find like a whole hidden thing in the wall here. Yeah, somehow I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it too, but... Okay. Well, knock away. Knock away. Bad news is there's some hidden treasure. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Didn't find any money behind the walls, hey? I was hoping. Hmm, me too. All you found is wood lath and plaster. And we've seen a lot of wood lath and plaster. Oh, yes, we have. So with the plaster removed in the corridor, it was time to head into the prison suite and get the plaster removed on that side as well. We then removed the current door and started framing it in ready to be drywalled. And gradually the doors switched place. And at the end of the week, we had a door in its new place and a new corner for a book nook. And with the door in its new place, it was time for one of Stephen's favorite jobs, sanding the walls ready for paint. And this is how it now looks. Very different from the day when it had tissue paper and paint on the wall. The blue paint matches the library and the corridor and that really gives it some character. Uh, we've still got trim to add and paint. With the ceiling's gonna be painted in a nice pink. Um, but the Parisian door is now in place, in the correct place 
for the fire marshal. Um, the floor will be stained and I'll add a nice runner um, for a rug. But overall, this corridor has completely transformed and is looking just really, it's really come together. So it's been a big week here in the pub um, with the kitchen going in, which has really transformed it. And we have a big update. I think it's a, I would say it's a big update on the opening date and some news about that, right? That we're gonna share today, but <laughs> it's a secret, but uh, we're gonna share with you an update. But first, before we get to that, we're gonna do some more questions. Yes. Because we had uh, so many questions in our 200th episode that we're still working our way through. So we thought we'd do some more. And this time today, we thought we'd come down to the pub and sit here, which is kind of nice. The only thing we're missing is a drink. Yes. But no liquor license, no drink. No, yeah, we're still working on a liquor license, so yeah. Okay, so let me choose our first question. The first question we got today is how many guest rooms do you plan on having? Well, we actually have three. Three. We have three suites. We have the Parisian suite, which I'm sure everyone's seen because we've had that was the very first suite we finished. We have our Sandpiper suite and we have our woodland suite. We do have a fourth bedroom that is called, called the garden bedroom. It's actually where we live right now. Um, but down the road, that will become available for people to use as well. So currently we have three suites. Um, they are accommodation that we use that is included in uh, weddings or if we have retreats or corporate events or you rent the whole manor out. Um, and we do also have them available for renting overnight for our key holders. So that's a benefit of becoming one of our key holders under the manor keys is that you get the opportunity to book overnight stays in our suites. So they, we're not bed and breakfast, we're not um, Airbnb, but that's kind of like an exclusive benefit of being a key holder. So that's how many guest rooms we have. Okay, next question. Um, was there any furniture in the manor when we bought it? No. Well, well, there, was. well there was, there was the piano. Yeah, that was the only saleable piece. Right. There was a lot of stuff in the manor that we, when we took a week at, that, like emptying everything out because it was all garbage. But the piano was thing. And uh, yeah. we did have a few questions about the piano. Where did it come from? Well, it was in the manor when we got here. Right. But interestingly enough, we did hear a story that someone was telling me that um, it wasn't original. It was actually built in 1840, yes. which is the same year as the first that part of the house. Um, it wasn't here originally at that time, but it was brought in later when someone saved it because they were going to destroy it and use the wood for pencils. That was the story I was told. Um, and then uh, they saved it and it's been at the manor ever since, which is really cool. But it's not playable. No, because one of the next questions I have is, um, is it functional, can it be tuned? Well, we don't actually know the definite answer to that because we've not had a expert. piano tuner and expert come in, but through the people we've talked to who have done that, they've told us that as it stands right now, it can't be tuned because the yeah. wires, well, Strings way. are so old. Well, they need to replace them. Right. So I guess it's totally possible if we put the money in and we replaced all the inside of it. And Which might happen one day. Yeah, because it would. Because it doesn't sound great. It'd it would nice be nice to, to play. play. I agree. There's something about it. I mean, it's such a feature in that room that looks great. But you imagine having an event where someone's sits down and sitting and playing. Yeah. Maybe you could learn yeah. to. Maybe you could learn the piano. Yeah. Mm. You can play the piano. Well. A long, a long time ago. I don't think yeah. I would be very good now. You can play the flute too. That's again, used to. <laughs> probably not very good now. It's been a long time. Yeah. So that's our piano. Um, it is also hand painted on the top, which I don't know whether many people know, but actually on the top of it. Underneath the dust. Underneath the dust that we've also got to clean it. Um, it's all hand painted, yes. which is kind of it's nice, quite nice. It is very it nice. Is very pretty. Yeah. Um, so that's the piano questions. Um, we had someone ask us where we get our ceiling medallions, which is a good question because we actually have lots of them in the manor. And there's a couple of answers to that. Um, we have got some on Marketplace. You found used some. Ones, yeah. And used ones that other people had and we reused them. We actually get a lot from Amazon. Amazon. <laughs> Which is kind of not the place that you think of, um, but it's actually from a millworks company. I think it's in the States, um, who do all that kind of um, yeah, plaster. plaster finishing. Yeah. Um, but we get them through Amazon. 
and they're great. Um, we've got all sorts of different sizes. Um, and then I paint them. So we get, always get them just primed and then we paint them all the different colours that we've got. So that's where we get our ceiling medallions. And then we do have a couple that were already in the house. So the music yes. room and the reception room, those ones were original and upstairs in the library. And they need to be restored. Yeah, because sadly when the government owned the building many years ago, they actually gouged some of the ceiling medallions out to put fluorescent lighting in. So you can see the gouges. The so, nicest ones are probably in the music room and the reception room. Yeah, and those ones are actually complete. Yeah, except, well, some of the... the yeah, that's the, true flowers are broken off and so so yeah. Stephen has got on his project list down the road when it's you know we're not doing all the urgent stuff is we're going to start actually restoring some of the plaster work on yes. and actually put them back yeah. but at the moment one day that's a one day one job day. okay one day job no <laughs> one, <laughs> one day we'll get to a job yes yeah um okay so this one someone asked they're curious to know how many times we've said I'm done with this it's too much and then said, actually, no, this is a journey of love. It's never too much. Every morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever thought it's too much. No. And we're done. No. But I think we definitely have, I definitely have days when it can be very frustrating and very challenging and very... The house isn't frustrating. I think we've discussed this before. Yeah. It's... It's the process, right? It's the process. And the red tape and the things you have to jump through to get it working or usable. So. And then doing something and then an inspector says, eh, not quite the way we want it done. And having to redo things. Right. But I think that when we have our events, when we have our markets, when you come and visit us and enjoy the spaces, you, it, it's a great reminder of why we do it. Right. Because we do love what we do. It is a, it's a passion project, right? It's... We work every day on it because we love the house. We love what is coming back to life and we love it when people come and enjoy it. So I think that, yeah, you definitely have days when it's harder. And I mean, even like right now it's winter and it's really cold. Like we heat certain rooms, but it's still really cold. And there are days where we're like, please, please spring and the sunshine, please come because it just makes everything harder. Um, so you have days like that when it's harder, but I don't think we've ever thought it's too much, right? No, no. Okay. Um, oh, this one's a good one. What's your favorite secondhand or vintage find that we've used in the manor? And secondly, what's the weirdest or most unique item we've acquired for the manor? Well, what's your favorite? Let's start with that. Well, my favorite is the grandfather clock. Right. That's yeah, you, that was one thing that you we love, right? We've been wanting one for a while. And, we, we found one and Stephen, well. Stephen faithfully winds it up every week although every he days. used to forget every now and then but oh, now yeah. he now he's got into the habits so that's good so he yeah. does the winding of the clock um i think my favorite i have a couple one would be our big cash register our antique cash register um which we now have in the pub and the second one would be our post office boxes that we also have here in the pub that, you store your coffee that I store all our coffee and stuff in our merchandise so that was yeah. two of my favorites and what about the most unique item Well, both of those, I kind of guess, are fairly unique. We've we picked up some yeah, really yeah. unusual pieces. Unusual. Like, you know, I don't even know. Like, I don't know what the most unusual... I mean, even things like our policeman's hat here. Yeah. You know, some of our decor Actually, pieces. What's pretty unique, too, is the chandeliers over the bar. Yes, yes. Those beautiful chandeliers that we have over the bar, those are pretty unique um, and pretty special. Which were donated to us. And they were donated, yeah. So I think uh, from the, some of the most unique pieces are some of the little decor pieces that we have, um, which are, you know, always cool, right? Um, okay, this one's a good one. It's very relevant to the Thirsty Whippet. How extensive will the menu be at the Thirsty Whippet? And will you have lots of non-alcoholic choices on the drinks menu? Well, the answer to that is a big yes. We are doing yes to what? To the big non-alcoholic menu. Yes. But the first part of that question. Oh, okay. Sorry, there's two parts. Mm -hmm. uh, how extensive will the menu be? Right. In the beginning, it will be small. Yes. Yeah, it will, we, it we will exist, but it'll be small. I think the thing is, our, our drinks menu will be fairly big. Yes, the drinks menu. Um, and I think that we're going to be adding to it as we go along. Yeah, but yeah. I think in in our 
overall, we want it to be a high quality, it's going to great be like, menu, not a we have hundreds of things and we do it kind of average. No, it, in the beginning, it will be start out as snacks with your drinks. Right, and we told are we talking about food or drinks here? Menu. The first part. Okay, the menu with that. The menu. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Tea that's the menu. Right. Menu. So there's two sides to that. The food, the drinks menu is going to be extent is fairly extensive. We will be putting on, uh, bringing in um, things on tap including Guinness. We'll have eventually have six taps. Yeah, we're gonna have six taps. Um, we won't open with that, but we will have it in the future. We will have a whole selection of wines, beers, whiskeys, the whole thing. So our drinks menu is gonna be extensive, um, but we're not gonna have hundreds, but we're gonna have good quality. We're gonna focus on the local as much as possible and things that kind of relate to the quirky English feel. Right. Right? Yeah, um, we'll have about six different local beers. Yep. Um, and then cider and some Wine. wines and um, whiskey and port right. and sherry and pims, English. Yep. So some of those different things, Guinness. Um, from the non-alcoholic side, we also have a really big menu of that. We've been actually offering that for quite a while now. We have everything from Guinness, Carlsberg, beer, IPAs, white wine, uh, sparkling wine, rosé wine, um, Rum, gin, whiskey equivalent. Yeah. And then even coffee, we're going to start out with basic coffee, but we will eventually have cappuccinos, lattes, espressos, all that americanos, kind of stuff. espressos. Yeah. yeah, so we'll be doing all the kind of like the specialty coffees, but we will have right from the beginning coffee and tea, obviously, English tea. Um, and then, um, as you were saying about our food menu, that will evolve. So we're going to start with our snacks. We've got cupboard bridge, potato chips and pretzels, and we're going to have um, some cakes and cookies and kind of things you can have with your coffee. And then we'll be adding in a, a more extensive menu for lunch items, charcuterie boards, plowman boards, um, soup and sandwich, those kind of. And then next year we're looking, or later this year, we're looking at a wood-fired pizza oven. So there'll be some really good We're going to walk pub. and walk well before we run. Right. So those are going to be added as we go along. Yeah. And then as soon as summer comes along or late spring, we'll be opening the terrace. Yes. And then you'll be able to go outside. And then outside we are dog friendly. So then you can bring your dog and we're going to have, we have Bosco and Roxy dog treats and we have dog beer. So you can bring your dog and have a beer on the terrace. With your dog. And we actually have a beer that's alcoholic called Fetch and a dog beer that's called Fetch, Fetch. that's not real beer. Yeah, one's real, one's not. Yeah, so, and it's good for you, it's all good for your dog. And so you can, we'll be serving that in dog bowls. Sure so will. that's kind of fun. Okay, um, talking about the Thirsty Whippet, we had a couple of questions about where on earth did we get the inspiration for Hendrix as our mascot and how on earth did we come up with the name for the pup? So you actually came up with the name. Yeah, that, that was just my mind working on different things and it just boop, popped into my head. Well, we'd, we'd seen some brands in the UK called Funky Pigeon and Moon Pig and anyway, so we've been playing around with words and then we were talking about Hendrix one day and it somehow fell into this thirsty whippet and then we're like, well, actually that would be a really so, good name. I thought, I thought you might think it was stupid. I thought it was great. And then great. when I told you, you were like, that's great. And then we thought, wouldn't it be great then if we're going to use a whip, Thirsty Whippet, we can use Hendrix's head and let's put a vintage mask, you know, right. um, outfit on him. And then he became then our logo. And yeah. so it kind of evolved and it came pretty quick. We didn't actually spend a lot of time no. working on it, did we? No. And now it's the Thirsty Whippet pub. Um, he's become quite famous. Yeah. <laughs> um... Another one question about our lighting. Where do we get our chandeliers and which is our favorite? Mm, chandeliers actually we get from all sorts of places. We get them from, we get, had them donated. We get them on Marketplace. We have uh, found them, friends and people we know have. Yeah, Amazon. Amazon, yeah, we bought them from Amazon. Um, Wayfair, auctions, auctions, Wayfair, like we have a lot. So which is your favorite then? Probably the one in the Sandpiper Suite. We got from a nice little lady, old lady in uh, Moncton. And she cleaned, there was probably like, I don't know, three or 400 beads on it, crystals. 
and she hand cleaned every one before we bought it. See, we need her. To, we need to bring her back yeah, to clean exactly. our chandeliers. Yeah, look her up. Yeah, we could give her a job. Yeah, so, cleaning yeah, chandeliers. If you're listening. Yeah, if you'd like a job back or a job to come and clean our chandeliers, we're totally open to that. Um, I think my favorite is actually also in the sandpiper suite, but not the bedroom, the one in the bathroom, which is the beautiful hand painted blue one with mm. the little pink roses. All because, hand yeah, because it's we got that in auction, it's so unique. Yeah, which, and you even have had the same roses on the yes, dresser on the handles for the dresser that I found so that we could match it up. Yeah, so that's my favorite. And let's do one more because, um we have so many, well, and then we'll do the rest of them next week. So we've still got more. Um, next week, we're also going to talk about, uh, we're going to show some of the transformations outside because we've done a lot of work outside as well. And uh, so we're going to be showing that. Okay, so the last question, what's the name of the artist who painted your mu mural? Well, that is actually Peggy and Jackie. They're sisters. They're, um, they have, um, they're called Sister Works Art, and they're actually right here in Dorchester. So they actually, Peggy and Jackie, were the very first group that used the manor way, way, way back when we first moved in and everything was a disaster. They came and did paint nights here. And they still do paint nights. They come every winter. It's been so long ago, the bathroom was still in the dining room. Yes, exactly, when they, were, when they were doing it originally and they've seen it all change. So every winter they do paint nights. So when we wanted the mural painted, we actually asked them. They'd never painted a mural before. And look at what they did. Amazing. It was, a, it was just amazing. So it's so lovely because they're local and we used a photo of the local scenery to paint it. So yeah, it was great. Okay. Oh, I guess now we can talk about the exciting news, hey? Very exciting. It is very exciting. And we're, we have now actually got an opening date for the pub. Now, before you get too excited, it is dependent on next week, because next week we have our inspections. Fire marshal, health inspections, to get our liquor license. We had our liquor inspection. Yes, our liquor license inspection is all done, we're good. So, assuming everything goes to plan, which we're expecting, because we've worked really hard at this, yeah. um, we will be announcing the date next Thursday. But I'm not saying it today, because no. we've, could been caught out so many times with the date and then I have to eat my words and say, oh, sorry, we have to wait again. So. And to all those people who drive up our driveway almost every day looking for the pub to be open very soon. Yes, and when I say that we're announcing the date, it's it's weeks away, Not we're not talking October. No, no. We're talking, it's very close. Um, so next Thursday, I think we should get the champagne out or something yeah. because how long have we been working towards this? We will be announcing the actual opening date. But I can tell you today, I'm announcing that we'll be announcing it. Next week. Next week. So that's our big news. Like I say, we do know the date um, and everything is looking good for the sign off. And then you will actually be able to come and sit here and enjoy a drink in the pub, which is very cool. And these very comfortable benches. Yeah, they are very comfortable actually. Very solid. So thank you again to everyone who, who sent in questions. We will be doing more next week. And um, in the meantime, we've still got a, quite a long list before the fire marshal's inspection. So I guess we better get back to work. Back to work. And we will see you back here next week for our next episode of the Lady Smith Manor Diaries. Bye-bye.